Well, this sound may take some time at first to get used to, but uh, but you can just repeat it, okay? So, oyasuminasai. That's the pronunciation. Literally, uh, o means honorable, as we have seen, and uh, yasumi means rest. And uh, nasai, we will cover nasai better maybe another time, but nasai literally means please do. So we could say please do a rest, please do an honorable rest. And we use it when we say, when we wish someone uh, to have a good night, a pleasant night. And um, when you are in between friends or the same family members, you can simply use the less formal way and simply say, which is kind of more relaxed way to, to wish someone a good night. Um, so, uh, let's see another word now, which is going to be, how are you? Now, we have to say something as far as the culture is concerned, though, yeah. Because in, it's true that in Western cultures, uh, we do use um, how are you to ask a person how he's doing, really. But in most cases, it's simply an expression. Besides, um, now we simply answer, I'm fine or I'm well, even if we are not really well. Because it has become a set. Um, expression just to greet a person. Now in Japan and in Oriental countries this doesn't really happen. So it is true that since now they got used to our idea of always asking a person how he is doing and they, they will do it to foreigners so it will not be completely out of place but still uh, the Japanese between themselves they don't really ask each other so much um, how they are doing unless they know that the person hasn't been feeling well lately. Um, but having said that, let's still learn it because it's an important, important ex uh, expression to use and to know. So the expression is O genki desu ka? O genki desu ka? Let's break it for pronunciation. O genki desu ka? So let's note please the pronunciation of su at the end. As you see, the u hasn't been pronounced here. The u wasn't pronounced. Uh, the reason being is that uh, it is found towards the end of the word, and this often happens in Japanese. So it's a different pronunciation than the one we saw in the other expression with oyasumi. In oyasumi, su was fully pronounced. But here, we simply say deska, su, k, sk, deska. We don't really say desu ka, but we say deska. Um, and that's because it is found towards the end. It kind of makes it easier to pronounce for them. Um, so let's let's break it for for translation. O means again honorably, uh, honorable. Uh, genki means in health. Des is the verb to be. And ka is simply a particle, which is put there to to tell you that it's a question. Okay, it's a question mark which you pronounce. So you say, are you healthy? Are you in good health? That's what you're asking. And so when you when you reply to a person who asks you O genki desu ka? You can simply say yes. And we haven't studied yes, so let's have a look. Uh, yes and no. Yes in Japanese is hai. Hai. So ha i hai. So in this case, when someone asks you how are you, so O genki desu ka? You can simply say hai, which means Yes, and then you say genki desu. I am healthy. Hai, genki desu. So the question is, o genki desu ka? The answer is, hai, genki desu. Then, to complete the pattern, when you say no in Japanese, you say iie. Iie. Note that there are two e. The e sound is double, and that's really important because it's a it's a distinctive factor from other words. Uh, for example, uh, if you only pronounce one E and you say IE, it means house, home. So you need to make sure that you pron fully pronounce the both E in this sound. So you say IE, which is a way to say no. So yes is hi, no is IE. Now, going back to the expression o genki desu ka, it is very formal. It's a very formal way to ask a person how he is doing. So, between friends, we we'll would simply say genki, genki, rising up the intonation. The answer can be the same. Hi, genki is good as an answer. Des itself, although it is the verb to be, can be omitted in very informal conversation.
or sometimes um, replaced by another word which we will study later, which is the word da. We will study this later on in the grammar part. So, let's move to the next expression. The next expression is going to be goodbye. Now, there are two ways to say goodbye, many ways to say goodbye in Japanese, but let's, few, let's see the ones that are normally used more than others. Um, let's see three. Uh, the first one is going to be um, a very informal way, something that you use between friends. That's, that is matane, matane. So let's break it up for pronunciation. Ma ta ne matane. It means again, isn't it? Type of thing. So it kind of gives you the idea of, uh, of seeing a person again. Um, ne is the tag question, and we will talk about this in a later video. Um, another expression we have is uh, another expression we have is really famous and very formal. That is sayonara, sayonara. Now that really means it's an expression that you use. Some people use it as a goodbye. Although originally it's something that you would say to a person that you're not going to see for a long time, but not always. Some other times they do use it, depending on the situation. But it's not really something that you would use on a daily basis. Um, for that, you have other expressions like the one we mentioned, matane, which is between friends, and another one which we will talk about uh, in a minute. So, sayonara, very famous. It's like, um, if, you have, if you were to translate it literally, it would mean something on the lines of, uh, um, if it must be so. So it is a very poetic form of, uh, of, of, uh, of saying goodbye to a person that, you know, you, you are going to actually be separated from for a certain period of time. And so it's one of those words and expressions that really show the beauty of this language and, uh, and the way these, these people used to think since very ancient times. And uh, let, but let's move to the next. Uh, also, in pronunciation, we need to be careful because normally you, you need to lend, to increase the length of the pronunciation of the o. So sayonara, sayo, sayo, nara, and then put a little accent at the end. Sayonara, 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 sayonara. Um, let's move to the next one, which is go it's something that you normally use uh, between colleagues, for example or simply within people that you're practicing sport with when you need to go away uh, or when you finish working uh, you simply uh, say goodbye to your friends by saying otsukare, otsukare let's break it up for pronunciation o tsu ka re otsukare otsukare means honorably tired and <laughs> you can easily understand where that's coming from considering the idea of of working in Japan and even practicing sport, the way they, they, they do it, it's obviously something that tires you. And that's, these are the situations in which you use. Um, the person you've spent a certain amount of time with is tired, and then you use this expression. But it's really used in every day at work by, between colleagues, and, and uh, that's how you use it. Um, also, there is the longer version, which is Otsukare sama deshita. Otsukare sama deshita. Um, otsukare sama deshita. Now, deshita is the past of des, so it is was instead of is, okay? And uh, in this case, you were, so because it's, I'm talking to you, talking to an interlocutor. And so you were honorably tired. Uh, sama is, means, I think you all, you've all heard of the word san. San means mister. Um, we hear it like in Karate Kid, for example, with uh, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel-san, uh, 